Okay, welcome back. I'm going to finish uh, this this example, which is 2.21. Uh, it states that there's an I-beam. It supports forces from three cables. And we're supposed to determine the resultant force applied to the I-beam by the cables. Resultant meaning the total force. So it's the sum of all the forces, what resultant means. Okay, it's the sum of all the forces. All right. So I'm going to re represent this as uh, a free body diagram that looks something like this. Um, it has these three vectors. I have the angles, uh, so it's giving me the, the uh, magnitude and direction for each of them. Okay. Now I need to be able to add these up. And you remember it doesn't matter the order that I add them up. Um, I'll get the same result. Uh, I'm going to use this one on the left for one, two, three, not for any particular reason, just uh, the method that I'm going to use for this example. All right, so here is the problem. Um, and if I look at that, I'm going to add, the way to solve this is to, we're going to use our um, law of sines and law of cosines to solve this. The method that I'm going to do first is I'm going to solve for this vector p, and vector p is going to be equal to f1 plus f2. So I'm going to add this. So this is vector p. Okay. So let's take a look at that. How do we find this? Um, we know a few things on here. We know uh, from f1, we know the value of f1. Uh, we know this angle is 45 degrees, All right? That comes from here. We know because if I draw a line parallel to this axis here, that this also is 45 degrees, okay? If I look at F2, this is 60. This is a right triangle. This is 30. This angle is then 30 degrees. With that said, I now know that this whole angle combined is 75 degrees. So there's a lot of geometry going on in these problems. So I know the value of F1, I said was 600 newtons. F2 is 800 newtons. I can now find vector P. That's what I'm going to look for, vector P. Vector P, at least the magnitude of it, is equal to using the law of cosines because I know these two sides and the included angle, I can find the opposite side. All right, so we have 600 squared plus 800 newtons squared minus 2 uh, times 600 times 800. And the cosine of the included angle is cosine of 75 degrees. And I take the square root of that. If I do, and I plug this all in, I will get 866.9 newtons. That is what P is equal to. All right. That isn't the whole vector. That's just the, um, the, the magnitude. So I also need to know the direction. So let's see if we can find that direction. I'm going to try and find this value here of this angle. If I could find that, that would be very helpful. We'll call that angle alpha. Well, I know if I know this side is 75, I know this side. I can also use 800 on the opposite side to find alpha, right? So we're going to use the law of sines. This above, of course, was law of cosines. All right, law of sines, like I said, we'll do, uh, we're looking for alpha, sine of alpha over 800 
times, right, is equal to the sine of 75 over 866.9 newtons. Work that out. Alpha will equal, uh, let's make sure, 63 degrees. Okay. So this hole included, of course, is 108 degrees, right? This whole included angle here um, is 108 degrees. Okay? All right. So now let's look at um, this side over here, this other triangle here. Uh, let's go down here. All right, so I have found this P, and I said that was 866 newtons. I said this was a 108 degrees. We know, if we look at vector 3, This angle that it's going down is this amount here, um, which is 90 minus uh, 75, which is 15 degrees. Or we have this coming down this way, as 75 degrees. Can I find this other angle here? Hmm. This is 90. I know this is 108. I know this angle. That angle we'll call beta is equal to 180 minus 108. And that means that that angle is 72 degrees. So now I will know this angle also. That one is, um, again, 180, right? Um, minus 90 minus 72 degrees, which is equal to 18 degrees. Okay, so that's 18. So my total included angle here is 75 plus 18 equals 93 degrees. All right, so a lot of geometry things going on, right? Don't sweat it. Don't panic. Uh, we'll just be doing this in this section. So for your homework, please follow these rules in using the lines and co uh, line, laws of sines and cosines. All right, so now we should be able to find the magnitude of R because we have uh, the two sides and the included angle. So we have 866 newtons squared plus... Uh, F3 is 450 squared minus 2A B times the included angle of 93 degrees square root. Our magnitude is 998 newtons. Great. Now that I know that, it, I don't have everything complete. I need to know this direction that it's going at, right? I need to know some direction angle. So can I find, I know this is 108. Uh, I know this whole amount is 72. Can I find an angle in here now? Can I find this angle? And I'm going to call that angle uh, phi. Okay. And if I look at it, of course I can. I can use the law of sines again, right? I know this side, I know that, and I know this length, but I don't know that one. So the sine of phi over, what's the opposite side of that? Uh, is F3 is 450 newtons is equal to our sine of 93 degrees over R, 
and r we said was 998 newtons. Phi then is equal to 27 degrees. I'm going to take that 27 um, and I'm going to add it to the 108 and then I will have a whole distance here, right? So if I take 27 degrees plus 108 degrees, um, this we'll call it as beta, is equal to uh, 135 degrees. So let's see how we represent our vector. Our vector has to have a magnitude. Our, we said the magnitude, and I say I don't put the bars on it. The magnitude is 998 newtons, and it's at an angle of 135 degrees in that direction. This counterclockwise direction is always positive from the horizontal. So this is how we would designate that vector. Okay. That's how you'd solve these problems. Uh, again, it's very tedious. Please take time doing this for chapter uh, section 2.1 and for your first homework assignment. We'll get an easier method later on. I'm going to stop the video here, and we will start with the next uh, example problem in the next video.